Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. good morning. Thanks for coming out today. We know that the weather is not that great, but we certainly appreciate your support. My name is Dolores Geoffrey. I'm the chair of the Woodbridge Township Historic Preservation Commission. And we're thrilled today because we're going to be launching our brochure on education in Woodbridge Township, which is a rich history for sure. Uh, but we're even more excited today because we've joined with the Woodbridge Library to have this wonderful exhibit here that is just outstanding. And we're so proud that it's here. Um, and I know how hard all the staff worked over there to get this together. Before we begin, though, I'd like to introduce the people who are here from the Historic Preservation Commission who have worked very, very hard in Woodbridge to try to keep the memories alive from the 1600s. And sometimes it's not that easy, but we keep trying and we'll never give up. So today, uh, again, I'm Dolores Joffrey. Dan Diaz is another member of our commission. We're so thrilled to have him with us. Bruce Christensen, another member of our commission. Frank Pelsman, Brenda Velasco, Dan D'Arcy, Miguel Martin, and I think that's it. I love a number of our commissioners are not here today, but we really appreciate. What we're gonna do today is we're going to hear a little bit about the library exhibit and this is something that you have to spend a lot of time here looking at because it is so fascinating. And then we're going to talk about our brochure and we're going to launch the brochure today. But first I'd like to introduce Monica who is the director of the library for say a few words. Monica. So the mission of Woodbridge Public Library is to connect the community with its past, present and future. I'm very proud to uh, recognize Wendy Rottweiler, who has been a, on the Historic Preservation Commission, as well as uh, has worked with history at the library. Proud to uh, thank her for the work she's done at the library as well, and to bring this exhibit together. Also, Julie Cohen, who you'll be hearing from in a few minutes, who is a librarian at the Woodbridge Library, has also done a tremendous amount of work for this exhibit, and Dan Diaz on the Preservation Commission, as well as uh, the volunteer archivist for this project. Thank you all for the work you've done. And uh, in addition, in the audience, I'd like to recognize two of our Board of Trustee members who have come out today in this awful weather. We've got uh, Carol Eberhardt here and Anthony Tarabetsky. Thank you both for coming. <laughs> and recognize one more person in the audience. On the end of the second row there is Marianne Ralph, the Assistant Director. Don't let her out very much, but she's done a lot <laughs> to make sure that everyone can get out to put an exhibit together. So thank you. And, uh, and I'd like to introduce Julie Cohen, who will tell you more about the exhibit. Thank you. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Woodbridge Public Library's exhibit, Woodbridge Treasures, Preserving the Past at Woodbridge Public Library, our local history captured in documents, pictures, and objects. Uh, thank you to Cynthia Knight and Brandon Powell of the Barron Arts Center for agreeing to host these treasures in the library's archival collection uh, and for being such enthusiastic, hardworking, and supportive partners in bringing this exhibit together. Uh, many thanks also to the Woodbridge Township Historic Preservation Commission for their research and brochures and for sharing the launch of their latest brochure with our exhibit opening. Um, and to Commissioner and Library Volunteer, volunteer Dan Diaz for all his hard work. Uh, especially huge thanks to Library Director Monica Eppinger, Assistant Director Marion Ralph, um, and the Woodbridge Public Library Board of Trustees for their support of the library's commitment to preserving Woodbridge Township's unique history. So with this exhibit, we wanted to showcase some of the standout items in the library's archival collection. And every item is a bit of history itself and a gateway to learning more. Um, as some of you may know, the Barron Art Center was Woodbridge and Middlesex County's first public library. So in this case behind me, uh, we have the original program from the opening of the Barron Library in 1877. Uh, we've laid out this exhibit as an echo of the past 
kind of like a library. Um, evoking the old Baron Library, forever linked to today's Woodbridge Public Library system. Also in the lobby, we have two display cases, so don't forget about those. One of them highlights the clay industry in Woodbridge, and the other, con uh, sorry, the other contains glass plate negatives taken by Perth Amboy Evening News photographers in the uh, 1951 Woodbridge train wreck. Oh, let's see. I'd also like to highlight the wall opposite me. Uh, is. Um, contains artifacts from school history, including two Woodbridge High School yearbooks, a primer from 1892, and a photo of the Woodbridge High School girls basketball team from the 1922-23 season. It's a very cool picture. I invite you all to take a look at that. Uh, the artifacts arranged in the cases behind me uh, range from a 1769 land indenture signed by Revolutionary War hero Nathaniel Fitz Randolph two blueprints from the Memorial Municipal Building, also known as the Old Town Hall, um, and mid-century menus from Woodbridge's popular Howard Johnson. So I hope you will enjoy browsing the exhibit. For more information about Woodbridge history, pick up the excellent brochures produced by the Woodbridge Township Historic Preservation Commission and or contact the library. Um, and I will invite the lawyers back. Thank you. When I, when I first, when Wendy was in here with uh, Dan and Julie setting up the brochure, setting up the, the exhibit, I came in to do some work downstairs because we have a, a little office downstairs for our nonprofit. And I walked past that first display and I saw a picture right in the front of these ladies working at the Lemur Plastics Factory. And I said to Wendy, oh my, that's the Lemur. She said, how do you know that? And I said, because my mother worked there <laughs> in the pajama factory. Was, the picture was older than my mother, but, but it was just so fascinating that I saw that picture and my mother had worked there to uh, support us when we were very young. Well, today we're here for two purposes, and I can't tell you again how excited we are that we were able to join together in this venture. I think it's the beginning of many, and we really are looking forward to it, because with this historic building, with the history of Woodbridge, and with the history of the, of the library system in Woodbridge, we should all continue to work together to serve our community. But today we are very, very excited because we are launching our 14th brochure. We have launched a brochure every single year since we started. And the commissioners worked very, very hard on this to put these brochures together, thinking of a topic or a location that would interest the people of Woodbridge and anyone else who comes to Woodbridge to see what we're all about. So this year's brochure is on the history of education in Woodbridge Township. And Frank Pelsman has been, Wendy for a long time was our brochure, researcher, writer. Frank took that job over and we are so grateful that he has taken that job because it's a lot of work. So together with the commission, we are launching this brochure, number 14, and Frank's gonna talk a little bit about the brochure. Thank you, Dolores, and thank you all for joining us this morning. Today we got a two-for-one special. We have the uh, Woodbridge Library exhibit, and we have the launch of the 14th brochure from the Historical Preservation Commission on the uh, Woodbridge Township Educational History, appropriately titled School Days. I'm sure most of us recall old TV shows like The Waltons, A Little House on the Prairie, where regardless your age or whatever grade you were in, all the students were crammed in that one room schoolhouse. Well, during the early days, whether you were on Walton's Mountain, Walnut Grove, or right here in Woodbridge Township, that's pretty much how you were educated. Needless to say, we have come a, a very long way. Back when our founding fathers signed the US Constitution, they realized that the success of our democracy would depend on an educated populace 
So at that same time, our federal government uh, established land ordinances that uh, set aside property for schools and for education. What made Woodbridge Township so special and unique was in our original charter back in 1669, we were already making those provisions to earmark land for uh, educational purposes over a hundred years before our federal government did. And um, as you'll read through this brochure, you'll see how time and time again, Woodbridge Township was always on the forefront when it came to educating its town. You'll read about the early development uh, in Woodbridge education from its very first schools to the creation of the town's Board of Education and how we evolved from that one room schoolhouse into the uh, school district and structure that we, that we now have today. In the brochure, actually toward in the center of the brochure, we've uh, listed all of the elementary schools numerically uh, in numerical order by school number. We've also had the uh, middle schools as well as the senior high schools where each school is noted by the town that they are in and the year that it was built. Also listed in our brochure is um, every superintendent in the history of the Woodbridge Township School District starting from our very first superintendent, Dr. John Love in 1899 to our current superintendent, Dr. Joseph Massimino. Various topics including sports, student activities, extracurriculars, special education, and technology were also uh, included in the educational history and the impact that they had and, and still has on the students in, in, in Woodbridge Township. The successes and accomplishments that you'll read about in this brochure were not achieved in Woodbridge Township without our school district meeting and overcoming many challenges head on. Whether those challenges were early on when schools didn't have well water and a student had to literally walk out of class just to get a cup of water at a nearby home, to the most recent challenge that we all encountered uh, with the outbreak of the global pandemic in, in 2020. Woodbridge has always been able to overcome these obstacles to provide the best quality education for its residents. Now, I don't want to stand here and tell you everything in a brochure because we'd like you to take one of these home so you could read it for yourself. But uh, being here today speaks to your interest on this educational and particularly important topic in Woodbridge Township history. So on behalf of the Woodbridge Township Historical Preservation Commission, uh, we do appreciate you braving this nasty weather to be with us this morning for the launch of our 14th brochure, School Days, A History of Education, in Woodbridge Township. Thank you. You know, at this time, we uh, open it up to uh, anyone who's in attendance who may have a question. I'm sure someone on the commission would be able to answer as long as it's not a tough loaded question. But, uh, you know, or better yet, uh, if someone has their own personal experience that they like to, to share that pertains to the history in Woodbridge Township, uh, you're, you're more than free and welcome to. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, if you could just state your name and, uh, yeah. Hi, Bernstein from Colonia. I grew up in Woodbridge. I just wrote a few things down. I'll say them real quickly. Uh, start with the uh, the administration building uh i was there uh for a short period of time uh, uh back a few years ago and the janitors kept telling me that uh gee you should go up in the attic and see what's written on the beams and across the wooden beams so one day i did went up in the attic and sure enough, it's, uh, you know, Bobby loves Susie, 1928, <laughs> and it's all scratched in, and it's hmm. just amazing how historic that building is. Uh, it's amazing. Um, when I was a kid, I went to up through fourth grade there, and I remember running down the stairs one time, the big, solid stone steps, and as I rounded it, grabbed onto the railing, I hit the little abutment that goes out, and I knocked it over. It fell down. <laughs> I thought I broke the whole school. <laughs> I had to tell a janitor, and uh, I'm sure they came and fixed it, I hope. Uh, 
Um, the other thing I remember about School 11, uh, when we went down to uh, lunch, it was down in the basement, and the smell, of, the good smell of the lunch that they were making for us wafted through the cellar as we got down there, and we stood in line. I'll never forget that good, I fell in love with cheese sandwiches. <laughs> really grilled cheese sandwiches at that, that point. Uh, at Woodbridge High School, Coach Shemicki, uh, our field, of course, our track was just named for Coach Shemicki, and he was just a wonderful man. I had him for science, and he was a great science teacher. Uh, I had him at Woodbridge Middle uh, before he went over to the high school. And uh, uh, he, he would come into gym class, and we'd be, you know, oh, we're doing our pull-ups and mm -hmm. underarm pull-ups, overhand pull-ups. Mostly we were doing overhand pull-ups. Coach Chimicki on his free period would walk in and he'd say, oh wait, let me do that. And he would jump up and do underhand pull-ups, start knocking them off. Then he'd do one arm pull-ups and we'd be like, okay, okay, <laughs> we got a little ways to go. Um, uh, also, uh, going back to Woodbridge Middle, a memory, uh, my father went to Woodbridge Middle School way back and he was a member of the first aid squad, which started around 1937-38. And the young fellows that were members of the first aid squad were allowed at that time at Woodbridge High School, which was at Woodbridge Middle, that if the whistle blew at the firehouse, they were allowed, my father told me, to go out of school, get on their bicycle, and bike down to Brook Street and answer an ambulance call. So I just thought that was an interesting little piece of uh, Woodbridge uh, High School history. Uh, and I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, my math teacher in grade nine, Mrs. Whitaker. She's long gone now, but I never liked math. <laughs> but she scared the heck out of all of us that if you went up to the board and you didn't know what you were doing, you better know. And I learned more math from Mrs. Whitaker in ninth grade. So shout out to all of them. Good teacher at the Woodward School. I'm sure she appreciates that, Lady <laughs> Artie. I know that I have a few comments in line with uh, Harry's comments uh, concerning the old administration building. I went to that school for my first six years of my education. Uh, I used to go up into the attic occasionally because some students were. Uh, earmarked to go up and ring the bell, pull the rope on the school bell, and that was there when I was going to school. So I had that privilege several times. That bell, I think, is down by Parker Press right now, but I had that privilege of going up and ringing that bell. Uh, during the 1950s, when I was at the administration building old school number one, this was, of course, during the time of the Cold War, so the basement was a convenient place for bomb drills. So we had, just as we have fire drills now, we had bomb drills then. So that was one of my experiences going down to the basement uh, for that. So I have a lot of memories. My father went to that school. My father graduated from the old uh, high school, which is the middle school right now. And has a lot of, had a lot of uh, pleasant memories from that. Uh, I also taught in the Woodbridge School District for well over 35 years, so have had first-hand information and contact with the district. So, so in your brochure, you will see that Dr. Love was the first superintendent of schools in Woodbridge. Um, that was in the late 1800s. Dr. Love lived in a house on Green Street, 9597 Green Street. In 1973, my husband and I bought that house and we lived there until 2008 when I sold it after my husband died and all of the kids were gone and uh, left. And I will tell you, I'm, I'm, I've not ever forgotten the fact that we were so privileged to live in this house. By the time we bought it, it was kind of falling apart. And we always said that we bought the front door 
and the rest of the house came with it. <laughs> but over the years, we restored the house and had a lot of um, tours come through the house, the historic tours, to show the house to the people who wanted to see where the first superintendent of schools lived in Woodbridge Township. Um, when I sold the house, it was bought by a, a family, which I really was happy about. They've done a lot of work to it, but certainly that was a treasure for, the, for a long time for us, where our two children were raised and then went to school in Woodbridge Township. And uh, it, it, to me, it holds a special place in my heart. And it does have a historic sign in the front, which is really nice to see every time I go. Well, thank you. You know, we appreciate all these um, experiences being shared uh, for the research on uh, not just but all of our brochures. Yeah, some of it is your old school research going through libraries. Now with the internet, everything's at your fingertips. But almost, I'd say every brochure has some piece of what we call oral verbal history. That's the residents of this town sharing their own personal experiences and the commission doesn't take that lightly. We, we really value that extremely, extremely a lot in putting our, um, our brochures together. Um, as a, maybe call a little bit of a trailer, I'm gonna give you a heads up on our next brochure that's gonna be coming out. It's gonna be called uh, Fun and Games. That's the title. And it's going to uh, be about leisure, uh, recreational activities from the date range of 1850 to 1950, but the whole purpose of the brochure is how these leisure and recreational activities brought the town together, our town of Woodbridge. And along the lines of this oral history, um, if anyone has any information they share uh, during our short reception, please pull me aside and I'll give you my personal email address. And if you have your own personal experiences you'd like to share pertaining to leisure, recreation, fun and games in Woodbridge, uh, myself and, um, and as well as the commission, we'd be more than happy to uh, be able to have that information. And we, we try to fit it into our brochure that we'll be launching for next year. So uh, once again, thank you for your personal experiences and being able to share with us. Thank you. One yes. Comment. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned oral history, and I want to give credit to Brenda Velasco, who a number of years ago undertook a, a big project, the oral history project, and that can be accessed on the Woodbridge Public Library site. So I would recommend that if you have not used it before. I think as Frank mentioned, those interviews have been really special to us as we've done the brochures and Brenda did a great job with those interviews really mm -hmm. so it's captured so much of the history of Woodbridge of people who are no longer here and to us that's really critical yeah, keep, forever I'll keep that oral history coming you know? <laughs> um, are there any other questions or anything else that anyone would like to share at this point then I'm going to um, turn it over back to uh, Dr. Dolores uh, Geoffrey, who may have some closing remarks. Thank you. We hope that all of the schools in Woodbridge will have these brochures for their students because they should really see what Woodbridge was and how it has, how it has moved forward to where it is today. So we'll be sending the brochures to the schools. Brenda is so great, she takes the brochures to all the senior centers. We take them to the community center, we put them in the libraries. So we hope that people will take the time to look at this rich history of Woodbridge Township with its school system, because it is really probably very unique to, uh, to all of New Jersey. So from all of us, from the Historic Preservation Commission members, from the library members. First of all, thank you for allowing us to be part of this exhibit with you. We're so grateful for that. And we certainly invite you to stay, talk, look at the exhibit, and have some refreshments. Um, thank you again so much for coming.